Let's look at double axes. Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So I did a video recently talking about the use of a sword in your dominant hand and an axe in your spare hand. And um, I'll put the link to that video below incidentally. And one of the questions that came up, and I've actually been asked before as well, is how would two axes work? Would two axes be a viable um, set for fighting with? Well, the first thing you have to say, I suppose, is that in many situations in uh, the modern day and historically, you had to fight with what you got. Um, and clearly in some situations, if two axes is what you've got, then you might end up fighting with two axes. Is there any um, historical evidence for fighting with two axes? Not that I'm aware of, no. Um, it is something that's been done in some movies. Um, was it in Brotherhood of the Wolf? I can't remember. I think there might have been paired axes in Brotherhood of the Wolf. Certainly there's some Kung Fu films where people use kind of two cleavers or two axes. Um, I think there might even be, I think it might be covered in, in a couple of Kung Fu styles might even teach it. But um, essentially it is something that has been done in the modern, probably fictitious world. So let's look at it anyway. Um, so first of all, is it a combo that I would remotely choose for anything? No, I wouldn't choose it. Um, absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, if I've got an axe, and an axe is a decent weapon, um, I would personally be happier using it by itself, or as always, with a shield. Um, and absolutely, axe and shield makes all kinds of sense, okay? It's a good and widespread weapon combination, a weapon system that we find um, in actually many cultures, but most famously so in the early and sort of middle part of the medieval period in Europe. And um, axes go very well with shields for a number of reasons. First of all, an axe is very powerful in the offense. Um, it's a top heavy weapon and gives really mighty strikes. It's effective against, certainly against padding and mail and obviously uh, no armor at all. Not so effective against plate armor, but more effective against plate in some ways you could say than a cutting sword. Um, uh, you know, just by blunt trauma alone. So hitting someone in the helmet, um, if someone's got a full, full harness and something like a bassinet like that one there, giving them a whopping great whop uh, in, the, in the helmet may, it's like hitting them with a mace essentially. It's better than hitting them with a sword because all of the weight's at the top of the weapon and it hits with more force. But that being, the, that being said, an axe is relatively poor in defense. A sword is far superior in defense by itself than an axe is. So therefore having a shield in your other hand makes all kinds of sense because you can have one thing taking care of the defense and the other thing taking care of the offense. Um, and having those two kind of dedicated specialized things, of course you can occasionally use the ax for defense or you could use the shield for offense, of course. Um, but having something that's really specialized for offense and something that's specialized for defense makes a lot of sense. Additionally, axes work quite well against shields. Not only are they good at breaking and damaging shields, but of course they're also able to hook. This is something that swords, generally speaking, can't do very well. You can hook with the pommel end um, of, of a sword, and hooking techniques are certainly part of the later medieval uh, treaties uh, range of techniques. We see hooking with the pommel done um, mounted uh, and on foot, we can see it um, in the treatises. So undoubtedly, if they hook people's limbs, with pommels, they in earlier periods when shields were around, they almost certainly would have hooked the edges of shields with pommels as well. I think it's a fairly uh, safe bet that we can say that even if we don't actually explicitly have it in a treatise. Um, and so absolutely with an axe, not only can you do the same thing, you can hook with the bottom end like you would do with the pommel, but you can also hook with the top end. Not only that, but you can also push quite well in a way that you can't, you can sort of push with the point of a sword. Um, but the fact that you can, especially with this type of boss held shield that um, pivots, you can actually push with the top end, hook with the bottom end, and notice you can get into situations where you can almost lock the shield in between the shaft and the uh, bottom beard, as it were, of the, of the axe. So axe is highly uh, useful against shields specifically, but also very good with shields, so it should be no surprise that in the so-called Viking era, we find axes used with shields. And in fact, if we go later on, I was asked a couple of times again under that previous video, whether we ever see axes used with bucklers. Um, 
buckler being a small shield like this, just conveniently had one behind me there. That wasn't planned, I promise. Um, and in fact, we do actually see axes used with bucklers. The most, uh, the first example that comes to mind, to my mind anyway, is um, the Holcomb Bible, or Holcomb Picture Bible as it's sometimes known, which dates to about 1340, 1330, 1340, if I remember correctly. It's an English source, which makes it relatively rare because most manuscripts um, from that period are French or Flemish or German or whatever. Um, in England, they we imported quite a lot of foreign-made manuscripts, but didn't produce that many. But the Holcomb Picture Bible is actually English produced, and it shows some infantrymen, including longbowmen and people with sword and buckler, and one person has an axe and buckler, and he's actually fighting someone who's got a sword and buckler, and indeed, if you don't have a sword for some reason, um, if you couldn't afford a sword, because axes were, generally speaking, cheaper, um, or you might specifically choose to use an axe rather than a sword because of the type of opponents you're going to be fighting. Again, if you know your opponents are going to be wearing certain types of armour, you might deliberately choose to use an axe instead of a sword. Um, there may potentially be other reasons. It could be that you have an axe for, um, for other purposes, <laughs> maybe killing horses or um, chopping wood potentially, although fighting axes and wood chopping axes tend to be different beasts. It's something that in computer games and role-playing games sometimes gets confused uh, in that people think an axe is an axe and actually not. A fighting axe is usually, not always, but usually quite substantially different to a wood chopping axe. Um, a tomahawk is probably about as close as you can get to a crossover. Some tomahawks you can definitely use as all kinds of light hatchet work as well as use them as weapons, but that's because they're fairly small. This is kind of a big tomahawk, I suppose. But yeah, absolutely, you can use an axe with a buckler, um, and you can sort of do um, sword and buckler techniques. You've got the lacking of the, of the thrust work that you'd normally want to do with sword and buckler, but um, nevertheless, it's, it's not a bad combo. Now, onto the axe versus axe, which is why you're here. Maybe, or maybe you're just here for, for whatever, I don't know. Um, but thank you that you are here, incidentally, and if you're not subscribed already, please check that you are subscribed. I noticed recently some of my subscribers got unsubscribed, um, and this is something which us YouTubers have noticed over the years, that there's something strange in the YouTube software that sometimes unsubscribes people. Um, so if you think you're subscribed, just check that you are subscribed, and if you're not, please subscribe, uh, it's much appreciated. Um, right, so uh, on to the two axes. So, First of all, absolutely, if that's what you've got, you might elect to fight with it. There are reasons you might choose to use two weapons instead of one, certainly against some combos. I'd say against spear, perhaps. Uh, we were actually talking about this at training the other night because we had a night of um, training sword versus spear. And as I've spoken about in many videos, spear has a big advantage over a single sword. Um, however, if you start to throw shields into the mix or armour or... Um, or secondary, second weapons in the offhand, it does change that balance. Um, and you know, one of the things that axes can do, as I've mentioned, is hook. And actually the ability to hook um, spear shafts, for example, could be quite advantageous. And if you've got two of them, you're kind of increasing your chances of being able to cover one line while defending the other. So one of the things that a spear tries to do to um, someone with a shorter weapon is, for example, faint high stab low or faint low stab high and it means if you've only got a single weapon a single short weapon the person with a sword or an axe is trying to uh, uh, trying to cover everything all of their body all at once against this spear that just can move from high to low with a minimal movement and you're flailing around trying to defend against the spear and then BAM you get hit in the place that you're not defending um, in that moment but if you've got two objects one in each hand what it enables you to do is cover the line against the feint, for example, whilst also covering the line against the potential secondary attack. So, for example, if you miss one and then it comes in somewhere else, you might get a second chance with the other weapon. The other thing you can do, of course, is cross the things over. And as I mentioned, hooking. So if you imagine that is now going to hook a spear shaft. So if I'm potentially trying to hook the thing here, if, if I get one hook on, I might be able to get a second hook on as well, or alternatively, I might hook it with one shaft and then I've got the other one free to attack. We see these kind of movements, incidentally, this kind of like defend, take over, attack, defend, take over, attack. We see these kind of movements in Kylie and Eskrima and Filipino martial arts 
and you know it's not surprising because they specialize in the use of two sticks or two weapons two barongs two whatever um, and so yeah absolutely if you're using two weapons you're going to get some similar motions involved regardless of what style you follow but if we look at Bolognese two sword tradition as well we often see one weapon low one weapon high when you're in a guard position because this makes a certain amount of sense because it means that uh, one weapon can ascend while the other is descending and vice versa so they can cover uh, your body in different lines but equally it means that one weapon can defend as the other weapon attacks so you could be defend attack or defend attack um, so absolutely having two axes in that sense is really just like having two swords or two barongs two knives two sticks they are sticks remember these are sticks with offensive bits at the end and really that's what this question comes down to isn't it is fighting with two sticks effective? Yes, we know that you can fight with two sticks against someone with a single stick very effectively. Um, the disadvantage of fighting with two objects is it means that you spend more of your time with your body, your torso, turned towards the opponent. Whereas if you're fighting with one weapon, you tend to be sideways on, and so you're making yourself essentially a smaller target. Potentially you've got a longer reach with a single weapon, um, because if you're spending your whole time turning your, your different sides of your body on uh, towards the opponent then you're kind of shortening your reach because you're always having to bring the other shoulder back forwards as well. Um, so it's not that having two weapons, I've spoken about this in a previous video as well, it's not that having two weapons makes you twice as effective as having one weapon, that's not the case but definitely it gives you more options, more possibilities. And I think in certain scenarios, for example, against a spearman, having two sticks is advantageous over having one stick, fundamentally. Um, and remember also that the axes don't have to do the same thing. While I've been looking at situations where it could be one defend, one attack, one defend, one attack, both defend, potentially both attack, so now I'm treating them equal, you could, if you wanted to simplify things in your mind, think, okay, this is my defending axe, this is my offending axe. You'll notice one of these axes is bigger and I note heavier than the other one. I prefer the lighter one, incidentally. Um, but, so I could do, I could think about it in those terms and I could think about, I'd actually probably switch, I'd pro probably put the heavier, longer one as a defending and the shorter, quicker one as the offending and my right arm's my dominant one, so in this case I would probably think about it in terms of defending, uh, almost defending like with a stick, and remember previously I talked about the fact that you could technically turn the axe around and actually it might be quicker to defend with the axe held this way around than head up. The disadvantage is you lose the advantage of hooking, and I think hooking is quite a cool thing to be able to do against not lots of opponents. Anybody using a pole weapon, anybody using a shield. So I could just defend with this side um, and, and basically when I've put my, and keep this weapon back ready to strike and when I've done my defense, bam, in comes the attack. And that can be really effective. If you imagine against someone with a long sword, for example, long sword's quick, long, formidable uh, weapon, um, but if you time it right and you manage to get your distance judgment just right and you leave an opening that the opponent thinks that they can attack into, if you ignore feints, let's assume you deal with all the things that you should do in fencing, but you manage to catch that one committed attack um, from the longsword, bam, they're going to be really open to your follow-up because they're not going to be able to defend from your riposte quick enough because you're essentially doing two things almost in the same tempo or perhaps even in the same tempo. You could defend an attack in exactly the same time, which is something you can't usually do with one weapon. You can in some scenarios if you if you bind and thrust for example at the same time. Um, so there are lots of possibilities with the two axes. Um, hooking, obviously striking, defending, all the things you can do with other weapons. The disadvantage I would say of two axes is that they are relatively slow and cumbersome weapons. As I mentioned with the shield there are better in offense than they are in defense. And I would say if you're gonna use two axes make them light ones. This one is too unwieldy really. This is fine with a big shield, um, but it's too cumbersome to be doing quick defences with. 
Um, and so this axe, as you can see, it's got a pretty thick section um, and it's a really powerful axe, but very slow in defence. So to conclude, two axes, is it viable? Yes, I think it is viable. Um, as I've mentioned, I think definitely it's superior to have an axe and a shield if you can in most scenarios. A shield is going to be offer you all round a lot more than having just another axe. And the axe is, as I've mentioned, particularly suited to working with and against shields. Um, but if you're forced to use two axes, can you use them viably? Yep, absolutely you can do. You can use them just like, uh, or similarly to how you'd use two sticks or two swords. Um, they could, each of them could defend, each of them could attack, or one could specialise in defence, one could specialise in attack. Absolutely, really they are, when it comes down to it, just two sticks with more offensive bits at the end, plus the ability to hook. Um, so yes, absolutely, you could use two axes together. Would you ever choose to use two axes together? That's a more difficult question. I personally can't see many situations where I would, but as, as I mentioned, I do think if my choice was either to have just one axe or to have two axes, yeah, I think there probably are a few situations where if there were two axes and no other weapons, I would take two of them instead of one. If I was fighting a spearman, for example, or indeed, if I was just carrying a backup, and to be honest, just having something else in your spare, ha spare hand in case this weapon gets grabbed or disarmed from me, uh, or breaks, or anything like that, or just I find it isn't very sharp, or whatever. Um, if I find this axe is not being effective, having a second axe I can switch to could be damned useful. And remember that you don't have to use the second one as an axe. You could use one as an axe, and you could use the other one really as a last ditch parrying stick, um, almost like a buckler. Um, so, uh, uh, or indeed as a hook, um, and definitely as mentioned against spears, being able to hook, cross the weapons over, maybe hook, hook, um, hook one thing as you offend back and this type of stuff could be super useful. So two axes, I don't know of any historical evidence for it, although there may be, uh, it might just be that I'm not aware of it. Um, and, and is it plausible? Yeah, kind of. I'd, in most situations I'd rather have two swords and two, two axes. Uh, but if two axes is what's on offer, use two axes. It's not ludicrous and certainly I think there's some things you could do with two axes that you probably couldn't do with many other weapon combinations. Cheers folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.